Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen and this is Stoneblock 3, the compact edition. Or at least, that's what I've been up to. If you look behind me, I have a whole bunch of compact drawers. I figured it would be a pretty smart thing to do considering that my only storage solution, one crystal chest, was just getting overfilled with stuff. So I kind of made it into a wall of just ores, uh, well, something like that ingots and whatnot but there's also some gems and some coal and charcoal and whatnot uh, I also made this storage controller down here and one of these uh, linking tools which the storage controller doesn't even work unless you use the linking tool and then you have to select the blocks that it actually connects to and then it will work to put things away like this you know so I can just left click to take things out and put it in uh, on the storage controller I don't have to like find it on the wall or anything uh, on top of that I found out that the compacting drawers these are different this is functional storage you can click on the edges so it just anywhere in the frame here as long as it's not in like the center area you can see that there's like different highlights of the areas but if I choose on the edge then that's where the storage and utility is so that's been pretty cool. Um, I haven't upgraded any of them. I've just been happy with putting them here. And I put uh, some just regular manuals and stuff up here in this Achacha bookshelf. Uh, and I also have the, the item shelves down here with just the, uh, the regular Tinker's Construct books in them, uh, considering that I, I got all of them. And this one is just a book with an ingot of gold molten poured on top of it. And you get the Encyclopedia of Tinkering which has more or less everything that you're looking for, more or less. So really that's the one you should probably strive for instead of these other ones. But it does kind of break it up into tiers if you want, like one, two, and three for the most part. And then there's just like miscellaneous stuffs. And this one more or less covers all of them. So it's, it's just a really good, really good book to have if you don't really want to have a whole lot of Tinker's books. On top of that, I did a little bit more of the botany pots of some different things so that I would have more selection, like all the rest of the saplings, except for spruce. Spruce is still out there because that's going to be my main wood source. Uh, and I've I found out that you can grow kelp with a bucket of water in there, and it actually kind of displays as water, which is kind of cool. And if you really watch, it will grow over time, but I'm not going to sit there and wait for it. I also removed all the lichen in the base. There might be a little bit here and there, but instead I now have lanterns because I have a plethora of iron, which is kind of nice. Uh, I also have a bit of this netherwort being grown. Yes, I imagine that will come in handy at some point, just not right now. Uh, you, just by the cover of the last episode, you probably noticed I also cleaned this up a little bit. It was at, it was at the end of the episode afterwards. I also took advantage of the fact that I have a stone pressure plate here and put a door. So this is kind of nice. And I know that I could just use a shaft along here, but I really like the whole, like, walking along gears idea if I need to or, you know, need to get back there to add more power. I slowed down this. It is uh, hooked up to a, a section further back. I think it's over, oh gosh, I can't even remember anymore. It, there's just so many cogwheels everywhere, but it's on a slower section of this whole thing, so it doesn't eat up quite as much of the stress units of the entirety. So all of these can now function, plus I've got a separate fire and water uh, fan blown uh, option, so I don't have to constantly like bucket up the water and put down the, uh, the fire and stuff like that. All that being said, uh, I'm sure you may have noticed I I have a flower in my offhand. It's because while I was doing this stuff out here, bees would sometimes appear nearby, or they would be in a wall and I would have to set them free. Then they'd fly up, immediately go above this air, this structure here, and then drop everything up there. Almost every time. And any time that I did try to go up there in preparation, they then flew over here and then dropped stuff elsewhere. So it was, it was a bit frustrating because by the time I waited for the bee to drop all the things, some of them were despawning. So instead, I've decided I'm just going to carry a uh, poppy with me, and that keeps the bee close by, <laughs> which I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, also, I'm just cleaning out some of the junk from my mob farm over there. It's It works really well. There is so much loot coming in through here without me having to do much at all. Um, I mean, this is just the regular drops, and then I take out the... Uh, the the loot crates, open them up and drop them in these chests. And what kind of loot do I get? 
the best kind of loot, of course. But, <laughs> as you can see, there's just a lot of weird stuff. In this case, I see some novice leggings, which is kind of cool, because I don't even have mage bloom fibers yet. As well as wither skeleton skulls. I don't know how I got that. Short of loot chests and an FTB pack. Totally makes sense, right? And as you can see, it does take a second because these are just hoppers. I don't have chutes underneath here. Probably should switch them over because then it'll pick things up instantly instead of like one at a time. But you can see that the loot crates are just kind of pouring in. And eventually I sometimes get something really nice. Now, for this episode, I have plans on exploration. It's uh, I know that I want to automate something every time. But in this case, oh, also I made a clock, which does actually work uh, every now and then you'll, you might hear a little pig come out or a little creeper come out. But I plan on making a hammer and then we're going to go over to one of these two areas. There you go, a little pig. <laughs> uh, but making a hammer, going over to one of these two areas and if not both and exploring them and see what kind of stuff we can find. Because if I wait until I'm like super duper like OP or something like that, it's not going to be quite as much fun. I don't know why there's a bee stuck here in the wall. Um, I'm, I'm just going to let, let that be. All right. Well, looking at my resources and things that I can repair with, I don't mind having an amethyst bronze pickaxe that does require some copper and some amethyst to do so, uh, to repair it, which I, it does, it's not too difficult to get the amethyst shards, but it is a little bit of a faff if I'm to get larger quantities. And if I use a hammer, I'm going to need a lot. So I figure I might make a, an iron headed hammer. Now I will be using some of the amethyst and copper for uh, amethyst copper, as it is, uh, so that I can make some parts, but nothing that I'm going to repair the uh, the tool with. So I don't really feel that that's like a necessity, and that should get me like seven ingots worth. And let's take a look at the hammer itself here, what parts it needs. Two plates, one handle and a head, or at least a tough handle. Maybe not a regular uh, tool handle, but I'm gonna do this. Actually, that's eight ingots worth. I think that's what it is for one of the plates. Let's do a plate first and see, because I think yeah, there's three blocks and one ingot. That, that was what it was for the head. Oh, it looks like there's still some left. Okay, so I can do another plate cast, and then I can just toss in some more for the uh, the, the tough handle. Because honestly, I'm perfectly fine with it just being regular, uh, like all of it, amethyst bronze for now. I can uh, speculate the stats later. All right, so I'm not sure how many pieces a tough handle takes. So in this case, I'm just going to use copper. There we go. Three pieces. And I've just made a mistake with that. But that doesn't mean it's going to be a failure. Let's do two, three of those. So this should get me what I'm looking for. I didn't mean to actually turn that into a tough handle. I was just trying to figure out how many pieces I'll need for this so I don't over smelt things. All right, there we go. Three ingots of molten amethyst bronze. And I want that to be at the bottom. So then I click here, should fill it up. And that's exactly the amount we needed. Okay, now to assemble this thing. Drag those across, put that here. Oh, I forgot the head. The iron head, which is going to be the core of it. And so there we go. It's not a very good attack speed. or The damage is all right. The durability is really nice. And it's already diamond tier, though I do plan on upping that. So let's put this back in here and start adding on some other bonuses. Uh, don't need two, just one of each, I think. Adding a diamond in will practically double the durability, up the attack damage, take out one of the upgrades, also increase the mining speed. It's just a really good all-around upgrade. And then putting on the emerald does more than just durability at this point. It uh, adds in some extra stuff, but I'm, I, I can't remember what it is. At this point, though, it's a very durable crumbling hammer, so I could even use this on something like gravel should I run into that. Now I would add redstone to this, but it's pretty much done for any kind of upgrade slots. It just has ability slots left. Now expanded is something that I would be interested in, which expands the area that it can mine, uh, but that does require ichor balls, and I think the only way I can get those is from netherrack, which I'd have to mine out to that first in order for that to happen, plus uh, amethyst bronze, which isn't that bad. Now I could also just put on there a golden apple and trade an ability slot for two upgrade slots. Then I could just add in a whole bunch of redstone instead. 
This is pretty tempting too though, uh, adding the glowing ability so that I can then automatically place light sources, but I think I'm just going to take a whole bunch of torches with me for now. Oh, there we go. It boosts effectiveness of conditional damage and mining speed for emeralds. Huh. Okay. Oh, here we go. Harmonious. That adds an actual extra upgrade slot. Oh, okay. Yeah, I forgot. There's a whole bunch of ways that you can add upgrade slots to these things. But I think I've been messing around long enough. Uh, I just need to get some torches, and then we're going to mine our way there. So remember when I said that I was going to just grab some torches and be on my way? Well, I kind of lied. I realize if I find a bunch of stuff, I'm going to need a way of bringing it back, and that's going to involve backpacks. So I just need some leather, chest, white dye, and string. None of that's a problem. If anything, I've got leather in here in the form of wilden wings, because I can just take those, convert them straight up into leather. As before, I can take some industrial hemp fiber, make that into string, and then I should be able to make this simple enough because I converted the white dye and I got myself a backpack. Now here's something else though. I noticed that there's also uncommon, rare, and epic. And I, they've got ever-increasing EMC values. So this implies that each one is slightly better than the previous, probably in its storage capacity. Yeah, that's not, it's not that much, but I'm, I'm grateful that it would store at least that much. So let's try converting this to a better version. A couple more chests. A little yellow dye, a block of gold plus two ingots. Okay. Let's use the new contraption to output to increase my output of yellow dye. There we go. Two pieces there. And we should get an uncommon backpack, which I would imagine stores a bit more. And the next level up just requires some diamond, blue dye. Yeah, I think I can manage this as well. There we are. The rare backpack. And oh it's getting even bigger. All right, let's take a look at the next one, the epic backpack. Okay, I don't have another star, and I'm not about to fight a wither, so I think this is where I'm going to stop for this one. Auto pickup. Oh, that's interesting. And I imagine that I could put it, yep, in my backpack slot, but auto pickup is now enabled or disabled. If I press comma, I can just open up my backpack without having to take it off. Excellent. So I'm going to add a waypoint here and a waypoint here so that perhaps I can find these uh, in my travels. Yep, I can see there and there. Oh, that actually implies that they're lower than I currently am. Okay. And of course, I've got plenty of apples with me. So I feel like I'm pretty well prepared. Let's get on with it already. Hello, little friend. When I look at the map, that little one that I saw was much larger than I anticipated. So I figured this will be a, a much quicker and easier one to get to. Then we can branch down into this large area, and then maybe even uh, finish the tunnel going off into this large structure as well. And I think we've found what we were looking for. I'm already seeing some issues the fact that there are spawners and skeletons. Oh boy, this is a really rough area to be in without a shield. Oh my gosh. Okay, maybe I back off and come back to this in a bit. Aha! I think I've found my way through here. It would help if I had some building blocks on my hotbar. And this should allow me to mine the spawner. It is a skeleton spawner, which I don't really have much use for. <laughs> so I might as well just mine it up. gives me a chance to see if there are any special drops from something like that as well. All right, let's see what kind of loot we might find in here. Uh, candles, golden carrots, some books, cold silverfish shard. Hmm. It's used on a summoning altar from summoning rituals. The mother silverfish. What? 
And I don't think that there's actually anything else about this place. I think it was just this one room. On the plus side, I, I was able to easily mine some uh, andesite without needing to mine andesite. But yeah, I think, uh, I think this is just a short dead end area. I'll tell you what, I think I might need to invest in some step assist shoes from Tinkers. Yeah, I think that's definitely a thing. It'd be worth uh, ditching the diamond boots for, I think. And here we are at the entrance, which I don't want too many things to get through at once, <laughs> considering that I'm hearing a lot of things out there. That kind of clears things up a little bit. Did that creeper leave special effects? And it has thorns? Okay. It's some kind of special creeper? Great. I killed the champion, apparently. And almost got killed by a regular. <laughs> There's a lot of mobs around here. And I don't know that I'll be able to light this room up good enough without coming up underneath. I might just have to jump down. So let's make... A little spot for them to come up to me for the moment and for me to get out with. Skilled zombies? It's got dampening. What what effects are currently in this pack? Oh jeez. That, that hurt a lot. Let me eat some food. Okay, I thought putting down a bunch of torches would do it, but apparently that's just not enough here. You know, you can stay up there. Well, at least I found moss and some azalea, uh, I guess, so I can use those if I need to, but I haven't found anything that I needed them for yet. For now, I think I'm just going to get my health back up and then pursue a little further into here. Oh shoot, I wasn't expecting illagers. Okay, that's a thing. Horse strays. Okay, this is a lot of weird things showing up in here. Uh, unexpectedly, very much so. Is that an invisible phantom? Nope, it's very visible. Just wasn't expecting one underground. Oh, shoot. Okay. Well, looks like we've got a leader. Nope. Back off. 
Oh, <laughs> that was close. Those guys usually hurt really bad when they hit. Oh, jeez. Okay, no, was not expecting that to happen. Just as I'm planting torches. No, back off. Oh my gosh, that was terrible. And they're shooting at me from a good distance as well. Okay, that that did not go as planned. It seems that they're fighting amongst themselves, and I'm all right with that. No, stay away, you little jerk. Hey, come on, arrows. Why don't you ever work against these guys? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just, just die. An adaptable skeleton? Great. No idea what that means. Uh, there's a bunch of guys over there. Some of them are suffocating. I'm right with that. There's a witch. I think I need to get some space between me and them. Nope. Okay. Whew. And I'm out of arrows. And now I am currently poisoned. Let me get out of here. And slowed, apparently. Even better. A turtle shell with protection four. Huh. Uh, another music disc. Dark matter. Okay. Some phantom membrane. Interesting stuff. Oh my gosh. Okay, that was pretty bad. <laughs> I thought that some torches would stop things from spawning, but it doesn't seem to be the case. <laughs> ah! Leave me alone! Leave me alone! Oh my gosh. Okay, the, the those dungeons are no joke. I tell you what, I think I'm going to head back. <laughs> Better equip myself. I did get some loot, but not too much. And I think I'll just make sure that things are a little safer for me over here. Let's put uh, let's put the button there. That way anything on that side can't push the button to get a, get out or get into my base area. Oh, okay, that that was a bit of an ordeal. I was not expecting quite so much resistance. And I guess I'm supposed to uh, destroy those spawners um, because those are some serious mob spawns that were coming out of those. And I don't know that I could uh, control them too easily at my current state. So I think over here by the mob farm is where I'm going to make myself a little enchanting area. And then maybe I can get myself a little bit better uh, suited up to the task at hand. And as I have run out of some resources, not too many, just I don't have enough sugar cane at the moment. And I do have a sugar cane farm going. I used up well over a stack just to make the paper that I had. Instead, I'm going to be making paper with an alternate source, and that is tree bark. Put the water on the bottom, and I can bucket that back out. And I now have four blocks of molten obsidian that I can just pour out into this block basin, and that should work out just fine. A couple of diamonds plus this obsidian and a book that I have, and I should be able to make an enchanting table. There we go. I even have one left over obsidian though. And here's the automation for this episode. I'm going to automate walking up steps, <laughs> or at least I'm going to attempt to with some traveler's boots from Tinker's Construct. Oh, but as it turns out, the one I'm looking for is step up, and that is only on the trousers or the leggings. The traveler's pants aren't that much more expensive, honestly. It's just a little bit more leather. So let's take these and start setting this up. I think I should be able to manage this with here and this uses up one modifier slot and it has currently three upgrades and it it'll go down to two with this which is fine this is 0.5 step height and this should give me plus one step height so it'll it'll give me that little extra step height interesting it will use up my upgrades again so maybe i test this first and see it works on chests. Will it work on something that's a full block in size? These look right. Oh yeah, that's not a problem. Actually, I don't think I need to put any more upgrades on this thing for step height. That's great. 
Now I could add in protection on here, which increases the protection to all damage types, but that, that requires so much stuff here. Let's take a look at everything that it would that it would add in. Obsidian panes from seared stone. Obsidian panes with molten amethyst bronze. Obsidian panes with molten emerald. Obsidian panes with cobalt, which I don't even have. And obsidian panes with molten gold. So I'd be able to get all of those except perhaps the cobalt right now. Now the only other thing I was noticing is that my apples don't seem to really give me that much. You, you see that they're very weak in comparison. So I did set up something uh, at, at, in between this episode and the last one where I've got a whole bunch of wheat, I've got a whole bunch more wheat, and a whole bunch of source berries because I plan on using these. Actually, let me grab more wheat. Combining these all together gets me source berry rolls, which besides granting mana regen, also is a pretty good snack. And I think it's going to replace my apples, considering that I've got this growing constantly right now. So that should get my healing going quite well. Oh, and I can even overeat it. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So I made a bunch of ender panes, or ender panes, a bunch of obsidian panes, just by pouring out obsidian onto a blank seared casting table. But by putting it here and uh, pouring in some of the emerald, I don't know why it's not rendering. It's kind of, oh, there it goes. It's just really fast pour. I can make a bunch of these plates, which I have no idea how many I'm going to need, but it's really cheap, so I'm not really too bothered about it, and I'm sure that I'll need it in the future for more uh, protection. Oh, that gives me six of them. Let's see how many of these things I will actually need to upgrade my armor with at least a blast protection. I figure if all these are giving me protection for, if a creeper comes up, this is also going to help me as well, and I might as well have that. And I think... This will be a project for me between episodes, but at the very least, I feel like I'm a bit better prepared to go back in with enchanted armor, some step assist so I can quickly navigate up and down one block surfaces without any more issues, and I've got some better food and an even more powerful bow that can also shoot torches. So I think that this is a good spot to call it for now. I feel the, uh, the the automation of my stepping up of things is kind of like a bit of a cheaty thing, but what do you expect for an explore, exploration episode, right? Next time we'll get into a bit more of the uh, crafting and quests, but I just wanted to give uh, at least a brief sample of what to expect in some of these places. So if you guys enjoyed this content, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, don't be afraid to stop by on Twitch. We also have another YouTube channel called Mischief of Mice 2 that should be on the screen now. You can click there and subscribe and see all of our Twitch VODs for our streaming stuff. Anyway, till next time, folks, I'll see ya.